David, always good to talk to you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. President Obama calls it, we can't wait. That's his strategy. And he even admits that he's going to use executive power to achieve his goals and his agenda. You hear that? I'm sure you're not surprised, but what concerned you the most? Well, I'm not surprised about it at all, Jenny, because this is a guy who, after all, has on some occasions said he wishes he could rule the way they do in China without having to worry about things like uh, separation of powers in the Congress. And from almost the beginning, when he's not been able to get what he wants uh, through the constitutional system by going to Congress, uh, he's tried to find other ways to do it. He's not the first president to do that. Bill Clinton famously uh, tried to do a lot of things by executive order that he knew he couldn't get through Congress. But Obama has raised it to sort of an art form. And I was, uh, after, I, after I heard the uh, news of his uh, remarks, I went back and looked at the, at the proposal that he received last, last year or the year before from uh, Mayor Bloomberg's uh, anti-gun group called a Blueprint for Federal Action on Illegal Guns, mm -hmm. uh, which in over 40 pages detailed things the president could do to go after our Second Amendment rights without going to Congress. And what this tells you is that he is not going to rely on the uh, on on going to Congress if he gets a second term, if if he has a Congress that's hostile to him, he's going to try and do everything he can to go after the Second Amendment, both through his appointments to the courts and by executive order. He's do, he's doing that uh, in a variety of ways now. It's interesting because it was almost two years ago uh, that the Bloomberg Group proposed that uh, he unilaterally and by executive order. Uh, require long gun registration along the southern border, which you know is contrary to statute. He took that step and actually got courts to say that it, that he was able to do it. Mm -hmm. But there is page after page after page of things that he can do uh, to restrict our Second Amendment rights, to restrict the importation of sporting firearms by redefining them and the like. So what this means to somebody who's a believer in the Second Amendment is that the defeat of Barack Obama in November is essential because even even if uh, pro-gun senators comprise a majority that can stop congressional action that this president might take during his second term, it's almost impossible to stop executive orders that he takes outside uh, the, uh, the parameters of congressional action. So this is a guy who is dedicated to to pursuing his ideological goals, among which are an assault on the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's going to do that whether he's got congressional support or public support to do it or not. And the president has, I mean, it's always interesting, he always talks about how he taught, you know, the Constitution. But uh, he doesn't hold back from now saying that he thinks the Constitution has kept him from doing what he wants to do. Right. The Constitution is really a sort of pesky thing for presidents because the founders uh, believed in a separation of power in order to prevent a president from becoming dictatorial or for pursuing policies that did not have public support. And that's the whole idea of the American form of government. Interestingly, Back when Bill Clinton used executive orders, uh, the support work done for him was done by a professor at Harvard, Elena Kagan, who mm -hmm. argued that here are ways you can go around Congress and get things done, particularly on limiting Second Amendment rights, without having to have congressional acquiescence. Obama put her on the Supreme Court and is building on what Clinton started, which is to say, ignoring Congress where you have to, where they won't agree with you, and just doing what you want to do by executive order and challenging them uh, to try and stop you. And that's what this president's going to do. He, he is driven by his view of an America that's frankly very different from the view most Americans hold. But on, on the Second Amendment, he intends during his second term, either through congressional action, international treaty, by appointing different judges, or by executive order, to pursue his, pursue his lifetime dream of limiting Second Amendment rights and gutting, in fact, the Second Amendment. And that is the very reason that uh, former Ambassador John Bolton calls him a post-American president for just what you were saying. No, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. He does not, he doesn't, you know, we've, we've had presidents who've abused their constitutional uh, prerogatives in the past. 
But this is a president who has nothing but disdain mm-hmm. for the separation of powers and believes that he knows everything about everything, is more talented than anyone, is brighter than anyone, that his uh, views as to what ought to be done are better than anyone else's views, and that, by golly, if he's got a chance to implement those views, regardless of how he has to do it, he's going to do it. You know, when he met with the Russian president and said, just wait until the election is over, give me some space, uh, and then I'll have the flexibility that we can do what we need to do. Uh, That was on missile defense. But one wonders, what did he say when he met privately with President Calderon of Mexico about what he's going to do about our Second Amendment rights? Because he's enlisted his help in the past to try and get Congress to go after the Second Amendment, and that's failed. Uh, One wonders whether when they met privately he said, look, we're going to do this after the election. Let's just lay off until then. Because of this, because of his, his visible intent, to do this, we cannot afford uh, during the coming months to to slack off, to lay down, uh, to not do everything we can to make sure that in January of next year a president is sworn in who will in fact take an oath to defend the entire Constitution, which includes the Second Amendment. You know, in the New York Times article, I, I thought what was really a reason to raise all kinds of red flags was them talking about the fact that even the president's staff is indicating that this isn't just some short-term shift that we're talking about. This isn't about the fact just that he's running for re-election. This is the president. And you said this was the president in his own words when he was talking to that uh, the president from Russia. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. This is a president uh, who has disdain for the system of government that we have uh, and is willing to do whatever he needs, extra constitutionally if necessary, to accomplish his ideological goals. This isn't a one-time thing. He's been building to this. He's been arguing for it. He's been saying that we can't govern uh, with a Congress that doesn't do what I, the president, wants it to do. Uh, and he's going to go out and say, as he's been saying, uh, on a number of things, well, if you won't act, I will. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to do that uh, on, on issues that affect Americans in many ways. But he's going to do that, I would predict, specifically uh, on Second Amendment questions and on increasing the restrictions on firearms ownership in this country. All one has to do is look at the recommendations from the Bloomberg Group, which were precisely based on the theory that he would do this. And one wonders whether his administration didn't solicit that study from Bloomberg's people to, to get a think piece as to what he might be able to do uh, in spite of congressional opposition. And when you have House Speaker John Boehner now saying that he's got some real concerns about the Republicans holding control on the majority in the House, that's all the more reason why we got to make sure we do something about who's in the White House. Well, no, that's exactly right. Holding the, Repu- holding the, majority of, uh, the Republican majority in the House means holding a majority for pro-Second Amendment congressmen, and that's great. Uh, keeping uh, a, a, a pro-gun majority in the Senate is important, and it's great. But even if you do those things, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, has the power and, more importantly, the will to go around Congress and do what he wants to do in taking us on without going to Congress for approval. So it's not enough to say, oh, well, we can stop him in Congress. We've done that during the first term in part because he's been distracted. He wanted to take over the health care system and didn't have time to spend all of his uh, all of his uh, his chits on uh, on going after the Second Amendment. But in the second term, he won't have to face reelection. Uh, He can focus on things that he wants to do. And among those things, remember, this is a president who promised Sarah Brady that while he had to operate under the radar now, he was, in fact, going to deliver on his promises to her and to the anti-gun crowd. That's basically the same thing he said to the Russian president about missile defense. Yep, so we'll see what happens. But it is it's an issue of trust, and he's not just overruling the will of the Congress. More importantly, the will of the American people, and that's really what's got to be concerned to everybody else. Well, he's defying not just the Congress but the Constitution.